Welcome back to the conclusion of our interview with Louis Lavella, celebrity and entertainment branding expert. In today's episode, we talk about his interview with Richard Branson, the difference between a male and female brain and how it affects marketing, and how filler words are destroying your message and your credibility. Welcome to this edition of Peak Peak Performance Performance Podcast Podcast. with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become Become a peak peak performer performer in any area area of of your life life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done, or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. Tell us some of the core beliefs that support you. Um, to me, my why has always been um, helping the underdog. It always has been, you know, and that's kind of why I like working with unknown musicians. And, and instead of the corporate festivals, I like the festivals where there's actually two or three guys that invest in it. You know what I mean? Uh, they're, they're very much the Ma and Pa style. And like I mentioned, Ma and Pa still bringing in 20, 30,000 people is not Ma and Pa at all. But it, it's that it's that basic, you know, you can sit in the room. There's less red tape. Um, it's the underdog. I love, I love that. It's part of my why. And it's why I like giving, you know, even on podcasts like this, I always get asked, so, you know, you're going to have somebody go to a landing page, get their email opt-ins. And I'm thinking, no, they can go to my website and learn. That's great. And, and interact with me. But I don't have a, a sales motive when I'm on these podcasts. I just want to share information and and help that underdog just get some golden nuggets and help themselves, right? And uh, that's kind of been my why. Yeah, and that always comes across as well. You know, I've been fortunate in the last 200 uh, podcasts. I don't think I've ended up with anyone like that. I'm sure it's going to happen at some mm-hmm. point, mm-hmm. And, and, but it just that just comes across. You feel that. If there's someone out there listening and needs what you have, they're going to reach out. They're going to find yeah, it. Yeah, they'll, they'll find it. And, and, and I put out enough content that hopefully they can learn as much as possible on their own you know of course there's going to be people that either don't have the time or, or don't have the actual expertise and they say you know what Louis, i'm going to hire you and that's fine but i'm only one guy so i can't take on yeah. you know seven billion people anyway so there's no use trying to always make a sale um it's just about giving away as much info as possible and and getting the underdog to really help themselves yeah you know people come to me all the time uh, advice on how to set up a podcast which i find is kind of funny because it was <laughs> like i learned from somebody but i said look it took me eight weeks I can share with you in 30 minutes what I did, what I didn't do, the mistakes I made, what I would do differently going forward. And a matter of fact, most of it I just put together in a nice little, you know, two page uh, handout. I'd be more than happy to give that to you. Save you, you know, save you eight weeks. That's not my business. It's just something that I've got a little uh, knowledge about right now. Yeah. And you can help somebody fast track, which is great. Absolutely. And then maybe they can help me with something. Yeah, you never know. I mean, it's great to make friends around the world. You never oh, and, that, know and that's who, been yeah. and that's been the amazing part of this podcast. It's been amazing the connections uh, that I've made, and uh, it's really, really nice uh, to have someone, uh, some big names at the end of the podcast. Go, you know, that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. And if you're ever in uh, Houston, would you stop in and, and see me? So, yeah, I love that. I yeah, love that. it's it's, so been, cool. it's been really. A matter of fact, this weekend I interviewed a U.S. Paralympian, and he's a track uh, star for. Uh, he's blind, and uh, I I call him the uh, blind javelin thrower. Uh, during the podcast, <laughs> he's like, I never knew that they'd actually give somebody a spear who's blind to throw. <laughs> and uh, he's coming in to see family. And he's like, Thor, I'm going to be like 20 minutes from me. He goes, Let's get together over Christmas. I, I haven't even met the guy. You know what I mean? I just interviewed him a couple months ago. Yeah, so I think that's really cool. I, I, I'm yeah. really enjoying the connections. It's amazing. The world is so small now with um, you know things like podcasts and like you mentioned, the Skypes and the Zooms and, of course, social media. It really has – you're able to interact with people constantly and build friendships without having to be at lunch, which is great to do locally. But now there's an opportunity to do it globally, which is so cool. Absolutely. And now I know exactly what you do. And I guarantee you, somebody in my network at some point is going to say, I'm trying to create this festival. I just don't know how to do it. Bingo. I know exactly who you need to talk to. Exactly. And and that's kind of the idea, um, like you mentioned earlier with the HVAC guy. If you can carve out even even sub-niches and niches, sometimes that's really, really smart thing to do. 
And you never know. Like for me, like you mentioned, I could be the music and festival guy and it's, it's starting to happen a lot more often. And, and it's just fascinating that, that, again, you have to have that long-term goal and then chip away towards that. Yeah, or I want to start my own syndicated uh, radio show. Oh, mm-hmm. I know somebody that did that. Yeah, exactly. Here, a quick here. story, a quick Skype call, and they're like, sweet, I'm on my way. Great. That's right. Here it is. You know, all entrepreneurs, we have to make decisions that don't always have all the information. And I'm sure there's been a time in the past where you've had to make a decision, didn't have all the facts, but you had to do it anyway. How do you decide whether to go left, right, frontwards, backwards? How do you make those decisions? Um, I try. I mean, you're right. You don't get all the data all the time. I, I like to use since I feel that I'm an expert in what I do. Uh, I try to just trust my intuition. And really, I think every entrepreneur kind of is nodding their head saying, yes, I know my HVAC stuff, you know, podcasting and, and business. And, you know, for me, for music marketing, I can trust my intuition. The cool thing is, especially with this, the age we're in, um, many mistakes, people forget rather quickly and we've seen that even with the election there's a lot of mistakes that happen and a lot of things that were said and people still forgotten either voted one guy in and you know still supported um you know hillary and supported trump you know just to talk about the election for half a second there and i'm not a political guy but um you can see as a marketing person i was fascinated by just the mistakes and things that could have been said that people still forgot that you would have thought ah this is going to destroy one or the other and it still didn't, right? So I, I think there's something to be said about using your gut intuition and making decisions and the ability to tweak and pivot even when that decision is made. Hmm. And what, what's the secret to that? Doing it. Like to me, it's like I've been doing this over and over and over again. And again, you're carving out your niche market. You're becoming an expert in what you do. Even if you haven't done it for 20 years, but you've been doing it for a few months, you start to learn and sort of your your gut, it's inside of you to make that decision, right? And so as an example, I, I you know, like I mentioned, uh, uh, let's, I'm going to back off of doing emails for my free course. I'm just going to go retargeting. That was just, I mean, I don't know anybody else is doing it right now. Uh, I might be the only one, or maybe people have been now. Um, or if you listen to this, try it, <laughs> but it was a gut decision to say, I'm going to jump off this cliff and not take anybody's email. I'm going to solely rely on retargeting on Facebook and Instagram. This is crazy. I know it works, but this way I've never seen done before. And it's just a gut decision that I think the user behavior is going to follow along better this way than email and just jump off the cliff. It's starting to work really well and I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking as, as I go along. So let me retarget you with this message instead of this message. But again, it's just I've been doing it so long and I've seen some of the data and I just, you just get that gut intuition because you've been doing what you know well. Yeah, you know, it's funny. When I moved to a model where all my consulting, I do it based on a 300% ROI. If I don't get 300% ROI back to you, um, mm-hmm. I give you your money back. And, and people around me were like, what are you doing? That's crazy. I'm like, what's crazy is for me to charge them money and not for them to get results, for them not to get results. That's crazy. But if you believe in what you're doing, try it. You know, I, 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 brilliant. Yeah, and, and you know inside, I think I can get these results. I kind of know my business. Yes. Like you, just, you just kind of know, and you're like, if it doesn't work, no big deal, I'll tweak it, or I'll cut that off, whatever. You right. know that you don't, you're not dead if it doesn't work. Right. But you just know, this is just, this is your baby, right? It's your business. Yeah. And I think everybody else out there knows inside what the decision is going to be, but also knows it's okay if you made a mistake. It's not a big deal. You can still tweak and pivot. It's all good. Yeah. Right? Same, same with websites. Everybody's like, well, my website's done. It doesn't have to be done. I change my website, you know, enough times. I tweak things here and there and whatnot. Same with social media. A lot of music brands, I say, <clears throat> sorry. I say, let's let's adjust your social media depending on what you're up to right now. If you're going after publications, let's put a pinned post on Facebook and Twitter of your recent publication that you're in. So when you reach out to them and they go check your social media, because that's really your EPK nowadays, right? Your your electronic press kit. They don't really care for the PDF. They're going to check social media. But it all makes sense to them and it speaks to them. Now, let's say your album's dropping. Well, now we change our pinned post to maybe the teaser or, you know, the cover page is going to be changed. Things are so fluid and moving nowadays that it's okay to pivot and change once you make your decisions. Energy is life, and you need energy in order to keep your business going. How do you keep your energy up? How do you build it? You know, I, I've seen Tony Robbins a few times, and he talks about that quite a bit on you can create your state of mind and have your energy no matter what you're in. And he does these, these great workshops that are three, four hours long, and you really realize, yeah, I've just – 
I acted sad. I acted happy. Like, it's great to go to these things. But I mean, again, to me, it always comes down to, do you love what you do? And then can you, can you, let's say podcast. I love being on podcasts because I can talk about stuff that I know. It's fun to interact with you and, and that kind of thing. So the energy's there and it just comes down to, because I'm doing what I love. If, if I hated being on podcasts and, and I didn't like what I talked about, you can hear that. Like you mentioned earlier, it's, um, I'm at this job and it sucks. Nobody wants to, you know, hire me as a whatever right. designer. And I'm actually shy on podcasts. I don't know why I'm doing these, but an article told me to do them. Like you could tell, right? So I'm picking and choosing. So off, off conversation, we had a chat about writing a book. I hate writing. I'm not a good writer. You know, I usually write and it's kind of how I speak. So <laughs> I try and edit as best I can. But I was talking about my next book and I think, man, I'm not going to be able to write. This is no fun. I don't have energy doing it. But if I speak into my iPhone and have a transcribe and then edit it from there, it becomes a little more exciting because I can get my iPhone with my, my, my high end earbuds in there and I could walk around my office and be a little, you know, get some movement going and I can actually give the information, you know, and have it transcribed. So, but it's because I like doing that. If I had to sit here and just write, you might even notice it by reading it that the, just the energy isn't there. So it really comes down to that core what is it that you love? But then within that, what are the things you like doing within that? The energy just comes. You just have to have that that knowledge that you're doing what you like and that energy has to come from there. Love it. Love it. You reminded me also to celebrate. I have a gong behind my uh, desk here. And when I'm done with things, I, I go back there and I hit it. And I realized in the last couple of days, I haven't been hitting it as much. I haven't, I've been a little under the weather. And, uh, there you I, go. Smash I, that gong. Exactly. I love yes. it. And it's true. You're celebrating the small wins. That's a great point. You know, again, people think about giving up so fast because there it is. There it is. Right. (laughs) They're celebrating only the end result. So the journey sucks to them. Right. But every little thing counts. You know, you have a Facebook live and 30 people were on it. That's 30 people. Like what broadcast medium are you on without Facebook live to get 30 people? Like, this is great that we have this, right? Like, did you, were you able to get on CNN or Fox news? Like, it's okay if you don't have this old school, you know, medium that you can get on because we have Facebook live and now Facebook live audio is coming out and that's going to be great for podcast live too. But there's so many great ways to get your, your message out there and celebrate all those tiny wins. Cause they're all cool. Yeah. And everyone that's made it big, start it with one person in the audience. That's it. You know, everybody starts the same place. If you had the ability to interview someone for an hour, dead or alive, who would it be and what would you ask them? Uh, great question. There's so many people. I'm sure everybody would love to, to choose a whole handful of great people to interview. Now, I have interviewed this person before, but for five minutes. And I'm going to say Sir Richard Branson. He's a super nice guy. And I did give him a five-minute interview uh, when I was on television, which was fascinating. But if I had a whole hour with him, I would really like to ask, you know, questions like, how are you innovative with your employees by way of coming up with the unlimited vacation and treating them like you know, they're one of, you know, you, you're one of them and they're one of you. Like, where do you come up with that sort of motivation and and what's next in your brain? Because he seems to come up with things that a lot of people say, hmm, that's a good idea. I should try that too. He, he likes to, to just be innovative in the way he treats his employees and the way the employees get motivated. And I just find that fascinating. That's definitely something I'd love to sit down and talk to him about. Not that I have a large amount of employees, but that's a user behavior that I would want to learn and study because I can use that in marketing. Yeah, a bunch of friends that are part of the Entrepreneurs Organization I'm part of went down to his island and spent uh, a week with him. And what really they the takeaway from them is here's a guy that's just literally having a blast all yeah. the time. I mean, he's just joking and having fun. He, he obviously accomplishes a ton, but he is really enjoying the journey. And I think... It, it can sort of stem to he knows his employees and upper management takes care of business. And there's something that he's doing. And I, I get when he's doing the unlimited vacations, those are all great items. But there's that core something that allows them to really perform. And so he can have fun on Necker Island and play tennis and, and just enjoy his life like he's not working. And meanwhile, he has billions of dollars of revenue coming in and, 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 and all these employees because he knows that they have his back. And that's just something I would just love to keep digging on and learning. Well, what did you learn in your five-minute minute, uh, interview with him? You know, I learned that he was dyslexic. Uh, I didn't know that myself before, that he's dyslexic. And I also learned that, um, you know, he does 
think about his answers. He does the ums and ahs quite a bit. So, uh, you know, again, he just acts like a normal person. You know, not that being dyslexic in ums and ahs is what makes you normal or not normal, but but he's just a down of earth normal person. And, and uh, you know, when I was asking him about, he was doing Virgin Fest in Toronto, obviously part of his label, things like that. Just questions on, you know, why coming to different markets? What is your concepts? And, and to him, it was it was never about expanding markets and growing business. It was just a, oh, I just want other people to to experience, you know, some of the the British music and everybody have fun. It was very much a, I just want to have fun. So what I would want to be in. I'm going to give to you that kind of idea. It was great. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned the ums and the ahs and the so's and all that. I was never conscious of that. And I started recording. I'm like, where did they all come from? <laughs> and they were in my speech pattern. And it's so interesting. If, if you're listening to this show, record yourself and see if they show up in your language patterns. Because if they do, it's amazing of how much it takes away from your message. And I've been working on this literally for the last three months, and I'll continue to work on it until I eliminate all of them because it really destroys the message. And it, and it just comes out without you even noticing. Yeah, I, I didn't notice it until I started listening back to the, the <laughs> tape. And it was Fascinating. And then stuff, you yeah. could see it. All the ums have a certain shape on the, I don't know what you call it, the, the screen. Yeah, the waveform. Yeah, yeah, the waveform. I'm like, there's another one. I can see it coming. <laughs> Just delete them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could delete them all in the audio. However, when I'm speaking to someone, I want them, I want them deleted there as well. As yeah. a matter of fact, I, I told uh, my girlfriend, I said, every time I do one of those, hit me in the shoulder. <laughs> Literally. She hasn't been hitting me much. We've been good today, then, I hope. I we'll listen to it. Or you just stopped hitting me. <laughs> I think she's just stopped hitting me. I think I, I, I've gotten a little bit better, but I haven't gotten so great that uh, I don't get hit any any time. You'll have like an um checklist on the wall for every podcast and see how, how, oh. how much better you get. I might need another wall. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it is, the it is getting better. Uh, you know, being conscious about it has definitely gotten better. And what I realized is it's okay to pause. If you make a thought and you say something and you don't have the next one yet, well, a pause is okay. And it's better than the um, – so – Mm -hmm. I'm working on it and I'm going to get better. Our brains move so quick nowadays. You know, I think, like I said, everybody has that ADD mentality. So it's kind of tough to come up with answers and listen to questions at the same time or, you know, that kind of idea. So yes. you're right. Yeah. Pause, and and for men, we have a much more difficult time, what we call multitasking, which is really switch tasking. It's not multitasking. And women's brains are connected the two uh, hemispheres left and the right are connected whereas a men's are not so we definitely have a, a more difficult time isn't that amazing like just and for, as a marketing guy i study user behavior so that i can get into the minds of whichever demographic i'm going after to help so i can market to them properly and this is a really cool thing in social media nowadays so so if i have a, a nightclub or a musician you know on that note i can market to the different genres, the different sexes differently. So if a nightclub, ladies night party, I can do a girls night out image and have a nice you know, text copy and just show it to females and have the guys partying, bottle service and show it just to guys. But I love studying the user behaviors of, of everybody, even age demographics and what they're doing on their phone and how they react to things. But it's so fascinating to, you know, when you hear those things and you, you, you remind yourself that the female brain way different than the male brain. And so, so how do I use that in marketing? You know, as, as a business guy and a marketing guy, how do I use that? Not to my advantage, but but to make sure the message resonates well. It's it's so cool not to just think about, well, here's my sales message. It's gonna yeah. 50 percent off tomorrow because this is, you know, whatever. Red Friday or whatever, you know, Red Monday sales or whatever it is, Black Friday, and, and and you go with the hard, boring sell. You can really dig deep into what people do and and then start to craft your message that way. Yes, I mean with with the women connect. So there's feeling, there's emotion behind it. Like you said, the men just put up a picture. <laughs> right. You know, Very you start, visual, <laughs> logical, to the point. Right. You, you start a conversation with us. Men are saying, okay, what file cabinet does that go into? Right. We're saying, <laughs> we get asked a question. All right, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, I think we're talking about this. And then a woman will change up the conversation midstream. And it's like, uh oh. Hold on, wait a second. I gotta put that box away. I gotta find the other box to, to take <laughs> out. I'll just throw this on the ground right now. <laughs> That's right. I, I I need a second to process this. It's fascinating stuff. It really is. I love that psychology of people and their minds, especially as a marketing guy. So here's something fun. As we're kind of going in weird segues there, but it's it's kind of related. You know, automated driving. 
that's you know Teslas and stuff like that. And I talk to a lot of people because I'm excited about the future because it's kind of cool. I can do stuff while the car drives itself, right? And I don't have one, but maybe one day. And everybody's like, there's no way, not gonna happen, no way in hell, no nope, automated driving, not not safe. The robot is not smarter than me. Okay, fine. And you hear that a lot. But then I say, think about the commercials. You know, you listen to a, or watch a Ford, Kia, Nissan, you know, they have the self parking or lane assist. And they, they show soccer mom is uh, yelling at her kids or imagining her on stage or, or the guy who's, you know, goes off into some weird imagination and then it beeps before you slam into the car in front of you or beeps before you switch lanes inadvertently because your brain turned off. These are small steps that they're trying to get into your conscious. They're not saying automated driving. They're just saying, hey, we know you're a good driver, but we'll beep if you just veer off. And they're slowly getting it into our head year after year, month after month on how the robot has our back. Eventually, we're all going to be like, oh, yeah, we crash way more times or we, we lose concentration way more times than the robot's ever going to do. And everybody's going to buy that automated car because they're thinking about user behaviors and they're thinking about let's not sell automated cars right now. It's a hard sell. It's too wacky for everybody. Let's just slightly show them some stuff that they may want to use and turn off or on. But let's just tell them that yeah, you're a good driver. But once in a while, you might veer off. But we'll beep for you. Basically, the robot has your back, and they're slowly putting that in our heads, right? It's coming. I saw an article today about Uber in San Francisco. Uh, they just got their permit revoked on their uh, self-drive vehicles. It was, I don't think it was in Huffington Post uh, today. And then they made another comment. They said right before they got everybody, you know, the cars off the road, one of them ran a uh, red light. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. But see, they're going with that hard sell and everybody's jumping into, this is not going to happen. Of course, yeah. the it's automated coming. Your car makes a mistake and everybody jumps yeah. on it. But there's, good, there's a lot more people that get in accidents maybe. Perhaps. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that the robot is perfect either, but I know marketing wise what they're up to. And I get that they're trying to just slowly put that in our, our minds when you're watching TV and you get that commercial. Three years from now, five years from now, there'll be. I bet you there'll be way more features in cars next year and way more the year after until we've all of a sudden realized I can hit a button and it drives itself. Whoa, how did we get here? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I attended an event with Kevin Kelly, the founder of Wired Magazine, about three months ago. It is amazing, the stuff coming down down the pipeline. He was just blowing the audience away. It was a bunch of CEOs, and it, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a great time to be alive. It is. And, and and speaking of Kevin Kelly, as a music guy, he had that article about the thousand fan theory, which was amazing. And anybody out there who's never read that, it, re it basically talked about having a thousand raving fans could make you six figures. Yes. And he talked specifically about uh, musicians and artists at the time. But and it's true for even, other, you know, any business. If you have a thousand really good clients, you know, you could really create a six figure income. You know, his theory was as a musician. Probably in a whole year, somebody's going to spend $100 on you. If they're really, really raving fans, you know, they'll buy your merchandise, a T-shirt. They'll come to a show for $20, $30. They'll buy your album for $20. Eventually, $100 goes by, and that's $100,000. So it was a really cool concept that he came up with. But And that was future thinking as well because everybody thought, well, I have to get on a major label and sell hundreds of millions of albums or I'm done. And he just said, guys, let's let's think what's happening future wise and how you can really make some good money by just concentrating on the small group to start, right? Super smart guy. And they might spend 200. That's right. And then it might be easier to get 2000 fans and all of a sudden 10,000 fans. Exactly. Adds up. Once you got that formula down, Pat, it could be duplicatable. Louis, share with the audience how they can get a hold of you and some of the things that uh, you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I love working with festivals and musicians, and that's kind of what I've been up to uh, my entire career, and especially lately. But, uh, you know, entrepreneurs of all walks of life I can really learn from the entertainment industry as one industry, taking some golden nuggets and bringing it back to them. A reason why I love doing these podcasts and not music industry podcasts. Uh, entrepreneur and business podcasts are fascinating, and they're great to be able to share my story. So, on my website, of course, and social media, and all of that is my first and last name, spelled L-O-U-I-E-L-A-V-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. So louislavella.com or at Louis Lavella on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. And, you know, guys, get on there. There's, there's uh, you know, my blog posts and get some cool ideas. And I do post, you know, all these podcasts and reach out, ask questions. I'm always fascinated with, 
hearing from what other people are up to and, and how I might be able to bridge the gap between entertainment stuff and uh, what you're up to in your business. So feel free to reach out and tweet at me and message me and I'm more than happy to just have a chat. Man, great nuggets uh, today. I really appreciate uh, your time and look forward to having you back on the show. Thank you so much for having me on. This has been a blast. You rocked it. Thank you. Every peak performer that has ever lived or will live does one thing extremely well. They know how to take their ideas and execute on them. Ideas and knowledge are not power, but the ability to execute on them, that is real power. If you consider yourself a peak performer and really want to take your game to the next level and truly master the science of execution, I would like to send you some information about our upcoming event, Business Execution Summit. Simply take your phone and text the word BE Summit, one word, to 41411. And I'll send you some additional information on how to master the most important skill you will ever acquire for your life or your business. Thank you so much for listening today. I really do appreciate your time, and I hope you found today's show valuable. If you would like to receive these shows automatically to your phone or to your computer, simply go to iTunes and subscribe. After listening to several of the shows, if you're so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating, as this helps us reach additional people and spread the message. If you're truly committed to taking your life to the next level and doing whatever it takes to become a peak performer, but something's holding you back, something is blocking your way, and you just can't seem to figure out what it is, send me an email to info at and I'd be more than happy to get on the phone with you. We'll schedule a 15-minute discovery call. No obligation, no cost. I absolutely love to hear from the listeners, and if there's something I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, if you found something of great interest in today's show and you want to share that with your friends and family, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin. Click on the episode, hit the share button, and share it on your page. You can follow me at Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is ThorConklin.com. We're constantly adding new free resources, discussing additional tricks, tips, tools, and strategies on how to be a peak performer. Remember, I try to keep these episodes short so you can listen to them during dot time, doing other things, commuting, driving, walking, working out. Decide to be a peak performer in all that you do. And until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day.